One of the most infamous executioners who operated in England throughout the centuries was Jack Ketch. He was a blundering axeman who performed two particularly high-profile executions which went horribly wrong. There was a skill in performing executions by axe, and those who performed their job poorly could often incite a lot of hate. Jack Ketch, later when he executed James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, took so many swings of the axe that he allegedly gave up once, and the crowd was so angry that he almost caused a riot. The crowd wanted his head on the block next, but there was an execution performed before by Ketch, which was also performed terribly. But what is the story of this? Join us today as we look at the botched execution of Lord Russell, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. William Russell was the third son of his father of the same name, the Duke of Bedford. Following the death of his elder brother, he became the Baron Russell, and was then referred to as Lord Russell. William went to Cambridge University, and he then went to Europe visiting a number of cities, before settling in Augsburg for a short period. He travelled widely for a man of the 18th century, and following the restoration of the monarchy, and Charles II becoming the king, Lord Russell was then elected as an MP for Tavistock, which was traditionally held by his family. He was not the most active MP to begin with, but he was present in the royal court, but in 1663 and 1664, he was involved in two duels, and was wounded in the second one. At the age of 30, he married Lady Vaughan, and was then linked to the Earl of Shaftesbury, who married his wife's cousin. It was said that Lord Russell and his wife had a close and happy marriage, but then he became more involved in politics. Russell became more active as he spoke up in Parliament against Catholicism, stating, I despise such a ridiculous and nonsensical religion, and he wanted to allow people to make up their own minds on politics, and he was strongly against the persecution of Protestants that spoke out. When he made his first speech in Parliament, he questioned a number of things, including accusations of French money being used to bribe Charles II's courtiers, and he also attacked the ministers of the king, who he thought had bad intentions. He then in 1675 addressed the king to appeal for the removal of the royal councils, but in February 1677 there was a debate about proroguing Parliament, which had occurred for 15 months, and he asked the king to declare war on the French. At the time there was a discovery of a plot known as a Popish Plot, which was planning to murder King Charles II, and move forward the succession of his Catholic brother, and Russell then looked at different things in politics. He became involved in a small party, which wanted James Scott the First Duke of Monmouth, Charles II's illegitimate, yet recognised son, to then take the throne after him. He was also in communication with William of Orange and his wife Mary, who later came onto the throne five years after Russell was killed. But on the 4th of November 1678, Lord Russell moved an address to the King to exclude his brother James the Duke of York from his person and councils. He wanted him also to be excluded from the line of succession. Parliament was later dissolved again and Russell was appointed to a new Privy Council ministry, and in this he then drew up plans to secure the country in case of a Catholic rebellious successor to the throne. But in January 1680, he offered his resignation, which was received by Charles II. He tried to help indict James the Duke of York as a Catholic recusant, and then even tried to carry an exclusion bill into the House of Lords himself. There was talks of a compromise, but Russell wanted his ideas put to the forefront, and after growing frustrated, he involved himself in a treasonous meeting in October 1682. He attended a meeting with the Duke of Monmouth and many other prominent politicians, in what was known as the Rye House Plot. They planned to ambush Charles II and his brother James near Rye House, on their way back to London from Newmarket races. But the plot was discovered, and unlike others, Russell refused to flee to Holland. He was accused of promising to help raise an uprising and rebellion across the country, which would then bring about the death of the king. This was obviously treason, but what was shocking was that a well-thought-of and respected member of Parliament was more than happy to do this. He was sent to the Tower of London on the 26th of June 1683, and was told to prepare himself for execution for his treason. The Duke of Monmouth offered to return home to England, and be tried if it helped Russell survive the death penalty, but he was tried and convicted of treason. Russell was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered, but as he was known and close to Charles II, the King commuted his sentence of death to beheading, which was considered less traumatic, painful and severe.
but Lord Russell did receive a fair trial, and Lady Russell was allowed to act on behalf of her husband at times, and it was believed his trial was much more dignified than others of the time. Many of his friends and family members tried to appeal to the King and the Duke of York to spare him. The French King believed he should have been spared, but Charles said, If I do not take his life, he will shortly take mine, showing how he believed Russell was a dangerous traitor. Russell even offered to live in exile and never return if his life was spared, but this was refused, and he even turned down an escape offer. Lady Russell even begged at the King's feet while she was on her knees, but this did not happen, and the King, who had previously shown mercy to his opponents, was tired of doing this. Lord Russell spent his last day inside the Tower of London, and he received morning prayers with the Scottish Archbishop Alexander Burnett. However, following this on the 21st of July, 1683, he was taken from the Tower of London to Lincoln's Inn's Fields. This was the largest public square in London, and here many executions took place. Here Lord Russell was led up the scaffold as the crowd looked on, and stood there was Jack Ketch. He spoke to the crowd, saying, Nor did I ever pretend to a great readiness in speaking. I wish those gentlemen of the law who have it would make a more conscious in the use of it, and not run men down by strains and fetches, impose on easy and willing juries, to the ruin of innocent men, for to kill by forms and subtitles of law is the worst sort of murder. I never had any design against the king's life, or the life of any man whatsoever, so I never was in any contrivance of altering the government. What the heats, wickedness, passions, and vanities of other men have occasioned, I ought not to be answerable for, nor could I repress them, though I suffer now for them. But Lord Russell's execution was botched by the executioner Jack Ketch. Executions were considered clean if someone's head was taken clean off, and this was what was hoped for them. Crowds did not want to see a poorly performed job, but Ketch took a number of swings at Russell's neck before his head was taken off. This shocked the crowd, and the executioner later had to release an apology, saying that Russell died with more gallantry than discretion, and did not dispose him for receiving of the fatal stroke in such a posture as was suitable, for whereas he should have put his hands before his breast of behind him, he spread them out before him, nor would he have persuaded to give any signal or pull his cap over his eyes, which might possibly be the occasion that discovering the blow he somewhat heaved his body. The execution was bloody, and it damaged Jack Ketch's reputation, but he would later repeat his brutal blundering ways on the execution of the Duke of Monmouth. Lord Russell was a prominent and important politician in the 17th century, and his ideas were considered rather radical. He greatly opposed the accession of the openly Catholic James the Duke of York, who later did go on to rule, but his execution has gone down in history as one of the most brutal in England. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.